I have an inkling that entry-level bikes are the best value they've ever been. But it does depend on where you get one. In today's episode, we're gonna buy one from Decathlon and see what you get. So I found a road bike on the Decathlon website for £400 with £50 off. We're gonna go to the Bricks and Mortar Gateshead Decathlon shop right now to see if we can buy it. There's a possibility we're going to the shop and they don't even have it. Is that what you're telling me? So this might be a waste of time. We don't know. There's a possibility. Why didn't you phone? You could have. Can you? Can you phone? You should have phoned them. You should be like, "Hey, is the bike there?" And they would have gone, "Yes." Secret camera is on. We're now going to buy a bicycle. How how small is the secret camera? Where 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 is it? Where's the? Where? How are you doing that? Did you bring the fake mustaches? Yeah, we're Actually, wearing. We them. just have mustaches. How hairy am I today? They don't seem to have the one we want on display. It was probably here. Guys, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Ideally small if you have one, but we don't think you Extra do. small, a bit too small. It looks like it's small, that one. Thank you. They were the most friendly people. Super helpful. Found us the size we wanted. Yeah, set it up for us. There's a free service within the first three months. I've never looked at bike stuff into Castle before, and it's very good. The Triban RC120, that's what we've got hold of. Decathlon have their own brand of bikes, it's called Triban. They do both road and gravel, and this is one of the lower end road bikes that they make. I'm excited about our purchase, Jimmy, already. I think we should weigh it. Does a really cheap bike mean that it's gonna weigh like five billion kilos? So to make it fair, we should definitely take the uh, pedals off because we normally weigh bikes without pedals. Uh, and we should probably also take the actual lights that the bike comes with for 350 pounds. Are they, are they hideous? Do they work? It's, it's, it's not the best, is it? But it's free. I guess it's better than no lights. It's, it is better to have them than not have them. But in terms of like actual road safety, they're probably not going to contribute that much. And they're definitely not going to contribute to visibility. Uh, touch this very lightly and it snapped. So did it snap? Yeah, it snapped. 10.69. Whoa. It doesn't feel heavy though when you pick it up, does it? Like it's obviously a heavy bike, but you pick it up and you're like, fine. Because of the money we paid for it, we were ready for it to be heavy. So maybe that's why. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. So we're just going to set this up roughly in the right place. My saddle height. This is a size medium frame, so there's not going to be that much seat post sticking out. Ideally, we would have got a small, but they didn't have any in stock. Seat post is alloy. Saddle is a B-Twin one, so again, own brand by Decathlon. B-Twin are the really low-end bikes that they do. I think they might only be hybrids now, and the road ones are all tri-band. Matching the seat post, you've also got B-Twin stem and aluminium handlebars too. They're all very basic, but they have been thought about. These are 40 centimeter bars which are the ones that come on a medium. You then get a larger size of handlebar on the bigger size frames and a smaller size of handlebar on the smaller size frames. The nice mechanic guy at the shop did bring the bike out of the back and it wasn't set up at all, so handlebars were tucked underneath the frame. He set this up for us, which is what they do for any customer, uh, but he put the bars on not straight. So we're gonna have to fix that before we ride outside. To be fair, that does always happen whenever you buy a bike especially from Backyard Bike Shop. I'm also gonna undo this headset, take some of these spacers out that are uh, underneath the stem. It's already a very endurance-oriented frame, so it's quite relaxed, quite slack, and seeing as both of us ride bikes quite a lot, I'd like the front end to be slightly lower so it's closer to the positions on our other bikes. I should probably point out, it being a relaxed geometry is a good thing, especially at this price point, because someone who would be buying one of these bikes would probably be quite new to cycling. And a more relaxed frame is a good thing. It's more comfortable, especially if you're not used to riding as much as us. I'm gonna do the bars out wonky again now, aren't I? My eyes aren't straight. These aren't tight either. Although, that's how most people run their bars around Richmond Park now, isn't it? Maybe it's so you can adapt to a more aero, aero position, position mid, while you're riding. Ride, yeah. Look like Harry Mack. Wheel isn't true. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not true. Did you know the industry standard, the acceptable standard for a wheel being true enough to sell to the public? I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but the tolerances are actually not that tight. So you can sell a bike officially to a customer quite untrue, which is what they've done here. It's not the end of the world. My favorite tool of the workshop. 
dummy pedal. And then you don't chop your hands up. This is my first experience of micro shift. Eight speed, the levers, they have two buttons on the same side and you can reach both of them on the drops. Rear shifting feels nice and smooth. You can shift three gears at once up, but only one down. Feels good, feels silky smooth. How cool is it that it's got a black cassette? It means you don't have to clean it. I think the official name of this group set is Micro Shift R8, eight speed. You can trim the front mech. It's got two positions of trim in each of the positions on the chain rings. So big ring has two positions, small ring has two positions. It works nice. Trimming or trim is the ability to move the front mech very slightly left or right. So you can eliminate chain rub when you're in different positions on the front mech. So when you're riding and you can hear the chain rubbing against the inside of this, often you can adjust your shifter very slightly, not a full press and get a little bit of movement from the front mech to avoid that rub. To finish things off, we have aluminum frame, carbon fork, which at 350 pounds is a big surprise and very, very welcome. 28 mil tri-band tires and completely unbranded black wheels with an aluminum braking surface, cup and cone bearings around. I thought you said they weren't right. I genuinely think this is like a legitimately amazing bike. The gear ratios are absolutely awesome. There's like a good range. I, I, honestly, it's going to be fantastic. I think we should go and ride it. <laughs>
it doesn't damage the frame, it just bends because it's made of nice soft metal and then you replace the hanger. This doesn't have one, so if you crash really hard on this side, you could, if you were really unlucky, right off the frame. It is made of aluminium, so I mean, you could try and bend it back within reason, but it's not ideal and you'll be weakening it every time you do so. The next thing is not wrong exactly, but I would have done it differently. They've taken the rear brake cable and they've rooted it out of the handlebars here, round the other side of the frame, and then back under to the stop which is just here. The stop is on the left-hand side of the bike, so I would have come out of the bars here if you were routing this for English brakes, the right hand being the front and the left being the rear, and gone straight into here like that. But they haven't, so they've used more cable than you should need to. The last thing I wanna talk about, and this is not a thing which is exclusive to Triban or Decathlon, this is across the whole bike industry, bike sizes are not very consistent. This medium, is very, very big. This is a 55 centimeter top tube, it's very long. In some brands, that will be labeled a large, and I think it should be. If you are gonna wear a medium-sized t-shirt, I think you should be able to ride a medium-sized bike, and things do get complicated and confusing for people when they're buying bikes, and they look at a medium, and they may, oh, it must be a medium. You could end up with something massive like this, or you could end up with something very small from a different brand. So I would say, have a look at the Bike Fit Tuesdays videos that we've released. There's some advice from a bike fitter called James who we've done videos with in the past, and he can help you run through how to decipher the geometry chart. The geometry charts are available on the Decathlon website and the websites of most bike manufacturers. So check them out, have a look at those old videos, and it will help you decipher it. A thing that we, we probably should add to this is, yes, the bike's great, but, Realistically, these wheels are, oh, I'm gonna say it, they're crap. They're cup and comb bearings. They're probably not gonna last very long. Bearings. Well, if you lived in like Spain. Somewhere, well, somewhere where it's completely dry, doesn't have dust, doesn't have sand, they might last 12 months. If you do have the option to upgrade the wheels, I think it would take this bike up a huge notch. In the defense of the wheels, you can get them serviced. You just have to make sure you get them in time. So if you're riding the cup and comb bearing wheels, which are not sealed bearings, so it's literally ball bearings inside and loads of grease on a bearing race, then they can be serviced. But if you're riding through winter in the UK and they're getting smashed with rain all the time or you're commuting on it every day and then it's getting left outside, you need to make sure you get them serviced before you start damaging the bearing race. So you put new ball bearings in, have them serviced by a bike shop. It shouldn't be that expensive, maybe 20 pounds, maybe 30 pounds per wheel. Uh, so yeah, you just need to stay on top of it. But Jimmy is right. A better wheel set would elevate this bike and be a perfect first upgrade if that's what you wanted to do. So in summary, that's a very good bike. It's absolutely brilliant. Should we go and buy a disc brake one now? Do they do it? Mm. They do a disc brake one, they do like, gravel ones, they do everything. Let us know in the comments, have you got one of these? Or have any experience with Decathlon as a brand? Let us know what bike you ride in the comment section down below. And thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.